there are 15 categories of uh, disabilities. And the both seems one of the biggest challenges in education, together with cerebral palsy. Uh, so that's a good paper. And now, the next group is on financing education for equity and equality. A critical a critique of Kenya's education sector since the introduction of FPE, free primary school education. Sister Madeline Sophie, Bara Tachin, and Lucy Wakia take the stage. So our work is on financing education for equity and quality. A critique of Kenya's education sector. So we came up with our, a model that will guide our critique and we'll see it as, as I move on. So that's our reality on the ground, just a bit of what happens in this country as we talk about free primary education. Poses challenges there of quality, even discipline, even I don't know how children learn, but that is just a case of what we are talking about, one of the cases. So in our presentation, that is the outline, a short introduction on what education is, in financing of free education in Kenya, again uh, a general outlook, then the model of financing and that's where we based our critique. Finally we look at success challenges, discussions and then the way forward. Now as many have said since yesterday, education is, is a right and is critical for all. So you find that in, in, the, in the UN document we all know that education uh, is key to life. It lessens poverty and enhances better health for everybody. As we focus on equity and quality, education is key. It's a powerful tool we know for economic growth, not just economic but even social uh, growth. We know that when you educate, for example, a girl child, she benefits the whole society. As we focus on, on, on free education, we know that the introduction of universal primary education in many countries in sub Saharan Africa has really enabled many children to enroll and get the opportunity to pursue education. We focus on Kenya, and in Kenya it's not just for children, we know that even adults have had an opportunity to pursue basic education. This has been the intent of the government uh, since independence. Right now it is so clear in the social pillar in Kenya's vision 2030 that education is a powerful tool, vehicle that will drive Kenya to middle income economy. Uh, and not just in the social pillar, the constitution of Kenya 2010 really emphasizes on the provision of free and compulsory basic education which is seen as a right to every Kenyan child. So we, we, we look at the financing of free education. This actually stems from the WTM declaration of, the 19, of 1990 and the Dakar framework of 2000. This is what pushed our government into offering free primary education. And what was the main objective? It is supposed to increase access and also to cushion poor households by abolishing fees. Now, it's not the first time, when we talk of 2003, that's not the first time that Kenya even tried to offer free education. We find that in 1974, the government had already abolished uh, school fees, right from standard one to four, and that extended to five and six in 1998. Now, with school fees abolition, uh, many challenges have come up, both positive and negative. But when you look at uh, negative, for example, we've seen overcrowding in classes, challenges of, for example, insufficient textbooks, shortage of teachers, and so on. So uh, financing free education remains a challenge in Kenya. And the Constitution further pushes it and in that way, we find that reforms are imminent by 2010. The education sector had to be reviewed. Now, when this happened, the task force 
proposed a, a framework, a session of framework, paper 14, that has continued to guide the three primary education. So currently at the heart of the education sector, we are busy focusing on how to improve quality, on how to improve management and governance of education. So we've used that model as, a, a, as an instrument to critique what is happening on the ground. So for us to finance, uh, or for the government to finance education, it is an issue of availability of resources and the distribution of the very resources. So when that is not well done, then even free primary education may not be a success. We have, we could talk of success, but challenges are also there because of issues of distribution. Now, if free primary education is, is to be a success story, really it must address issues of equity and quality. And our main challenge is, is, that is equity. equity in terms of gender, socioeconomic status, and even uh, regional uh, or geographical locations and so on. Quality, we know there's a big cry about uh, the, the quality of teaching, quality of learning in most of our schools. So, uh, I'll just quickly uh, summarize the successes. We know that enrollment has increased. We know that uh, parents from poor backgrounds can now access education. We also know that uh, completion rates are a success story and there's a positive trend in transition. But the challenges are also quite many because we have cases of issues of mis misappropriation of funds and uh, A's have been frozen by Department for Internal Development, for example, U USA. We have indirect costs as much as we talk of free primary education, indirect costs in form of uniform or travel expenses. HIV and AIDS is really posing a challenge, whether in terms of uh, having enough teachers, or we have teacher attrition, we have orphans, and so on. Then wage, wage labor is still a challenge because sometimes parents prefer to have their children work. So we talk of opportunity costs in having a child at home or having a child working or in school. Then the story is this goes on and uh, we, I don't know when we we'll have a stop to this shortage of teachers, heavy workload, and of course lack of discipline in schools. Lack of discipline because we have all sorts from children to adults in the same classroom, for example. Now, the challenge remains that sustaining the provision of good quality education is, is really, I think, a headache to the government because a lot of it, a lot of the money comes from external donors and we've seen that some have been withdrawn their aid. So the bulk of the budget on education really is on re re remuneration of teachers. So very little is left for, let's say, uh, uh, teaching of children or improving facilities and so on. And the whole policy was not introduced and implemented properly. It was a quick thing. It was like a government uh, campaign tool, and that is how free education came into be. although the government was trying to respond to the DACA call and so on. Now, what are we saying about our findings? Indeed, free primary education policy is a good thing. It shows that the government has embraced uh, a really good step towards uh, providing universal primary education, but just like Malawi, Uganda, and Lesotho, the approach of this uh, policy was not well done. We say a big bang approach with very limited time and uh, to, to, to offer, let's say, detailed planning. So challenges of equity and quality has remained uh, when you look at regional disparity. So there's really need for cost-effective strategies to raise quality primary schools with limited resources. Now, uh, the government also needs to look at how it's, it's distributing its finances. For example, we feel that more money, more funds should be injected into CDFs to improve quality and teaching. Issues of equity, especially for orphans and their vulnerable children, must be considered at all levels. 
But the government needs also to build a very strong accountability to improve the ways resources are being transformed into learning opportunities nationally, in the counties, sub-counties, and at school levels. Now, we could learn from other countries that are successful, like Uganda, uh, where when money is distributed, it's all posted out there in the public, and people can even make a follow-up on how it's being used. So there's need to translate the free primary policy into practice by addressing issues of curriculum. Let's see, early great literacy and numeracy. Uh, we also uh, findings tell us that in Nyeri, for example, only 51.8% of children, let's say uh, in class three, can do class two work. When you come to Wajir, for example, only 9.9 .9 class three students can do class two work. So something is, is really wrong. We need to enhance teacher pedagogical skills because how do we teach crowds of children with, with no proper um, preparation and planning? So we, there's also need to improve administrative and I mean, managerial efficiency so that when we look at issues of HIV AIDS, uh, there's a way that we can counteract that challenge. Our conclusion, free primary sustainability really remains a big question. So there's need for concerted effort, both, both from the government and development partners in terms of policy and financing. So the government really needs to undertake a more comprehensive approach from the school level, sub-county, national, and so on. In, in fact, a real functional system in monitoring free primary program should be in place. Tighten all accountability, especially of policy. Is it working? Is it not working? More should be done. They need to focus on, the government really has to focus on critical areas like acceleration of teacher employment. You context, contextualize the, the use of, of facilities or uh, what people have in their, at county level. Because you find in some counties, a lot is being done. In other counties, it's like there isn't much happening. So expand existing schools. And as you expand, please pilot, I think, the implementation of this policy was really not piloted. Teachers not involved, major stakeholders were not involved, no one again the challenges. So efforts should be intensified with the view of reversing regional and gender disparities to ensure inclusive and equitable education for all by 2030. So thank you, uh, that is everyone.